Thank you, Father. God, we're so thankful that you are a God of simplicity. That song summed it all up. What I want everybody to do is just hold your hands up, and on the count of three, we're all going to say, we all say, yes, God. That's all we need to say, and just let your mind be shut down of the worldly things and just allow God to just saturate you today because it's so simple. All you got to do is say yes, and he'll take care of the rest. That's all we need to do. That's it. Amen. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Yes, yes God. God. Amen. So, Father, we praise you right now for this time. We're thanking you that your presence is here. We're thanking you, Lord, that we can leave all the junk of the world of the week of our past today behind us in Jesus' name. That today's a new day that we can walk in your love, walk in your ways, walk in your path, Father. Because when we're in that presence of your love, of your Holy Spirit, Father, there's nothing that we cannot overcome. So today, Father, we're thanking you that your word says we are overcomers. And we're accepting that. We're grabbing a hold of that, knowing that because of you, Jesus, we can do that. So, Father, we love you and we praise you. We're thanking you that the word that's going to come forth, Father, is going to penetrate our hearts and just move us to that next level to be more like Jesus wherever we go. So we're thanking you for that love. We're thanking you for your presence. We're thanking you for all that you do for us. And all God's people it's a great said, day, amen. 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 In the presence of the Lord, it's always a great day. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be in the presence of the Lord, right? Amen. No matter where our battles are, no matter where our struggles are, no matter where the happiness is, the joy, we're in God's place all the time. And as we just lean on him, man, it don't get any better now. I had the opportunity to hear this young man. Like I say, in the past, I, I share with you, and I'll, I'll share it again. Pastor always looks for the Holy Spirit. Who should preach? Who should give the word? Who should do when she's not available? And, and like I say, she'll be back soon. Trust me. Yeah. She's a warrior. Oh, man. She's chomping at the bit right now. <laughs> Let me out of here. You know, I think Teddy's holding her back. Just calm down, man. Just calm down. Trips or when she's trying to get out the door and stuff like that. You know, it works out good. Uh, there's a benefit to a little dog, you know. He's pretty persistent, too. Um, but anyway, um, so Pastor knows, seeks the Lord, and just knows that the Holy Spirit's going to work through a certain per place, person, in this situation to bring what his people need to hear today. So like I say, last time I heard my brother Bear, who's going to give us the word today. That's how I know him. Larry, yes. Larry, Larry, we got all kinds of stuff going on here, but we call him Bear. I was down in Kalamazoo, and I got to listen to his message, and I was very um, blessed because of how God worked in him and through him. So at this time, I just want to introduce Bear slash Larry. We know him better as Bear. I, I call him Teddy Bear. Amen to that. All right. The handoff is good. All right. Thanks, brother. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, you all look a lot different than you look from back there. So, um, uh, Tim, can you go ahead and put that slide up? No, no, it don't need to be. I just wanted to read this before I say, Lord, I've made up my mind. God, no more excuses. We open the door and we let you in today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so, like he said, Pastor asked me to do it. Um, most of you don't know I'm a chapter president of the National Wild Turkey Federation down in Mason County. And so we had our annual banquet on Friday night. And uh, I felt my phone vibrating throughout the night. And I finally had a time to sit down during the live auction. And uh, it was 9 o'clock. And I see Pastor text me as so I'm looking at it. It says, uh, are you still on call on Sundays? for work. I said, well, not this Sunday, but yeah. And uh, she says, uh, are you going to be there Sunday? Well, Tim, last week had asked me, hey, I don't think I'm going to be there Sunday. We might be going out of town. Can you cover me? So I figured, okay, she's just asking double to double check, make sure I'm going to be there. And I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll be there. And uh, she says, well, do you trust the Holy Spirit in you to bring forth the word on Sunday? And immediately my heart went, Thum, 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 thum. And, uh, well, I started to type an excuse. And at that exact moment, one of my committee members said, hey, I need a hand with this. And he come over, and I put my phone down. And I walked away for the rest of the night, and I was busy until um, I didn't get home until 1130. And that's why I text Pastor back. I said, well, um, thank you. I, I trust in you. I trust that you hear in the Holy Spirit, and I'll let him lead the way. So. Um, 
Last time I had a week and a half. <laughs> this time I had a day. So, um, and my wife asked me, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to study? I said, nope. I said, I'm going to trust in him and whatever he's got to say, he's going to say. Um, and so yesterday we ran some errands in the morning and then I went and helped my brother on the farm and I didn't get home until, oh, it was about seven o'clock last night. So I finally got home and I thought, well, I'm going to crack open the Bible real quick. And I just happened to open the Bible to Matthew 5. So if you guys want to turn there. And in my mind, I was thinking something else. And I thought, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to let him lead. So 715's page number? 1115. All right, now I'm reading out of the... New International Version. So it's going to be a little different, but it's all going to be the same. Um, and I'll get, this is going to tie into, I'm kind of going to go over about the last year, year and a half testimony of my life. So, um, so if you go down to verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp, put it under a bowl, instead of put it on a light stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise the Father in heaven. So, a year ago, just not quite a year ago, a um, good friend of mine messaged me, said, hey, are you still looking for a job? And I was in a job. I'd been there for eight years. Um, I worked in a factory, well, not really a factory, manufacturing facility. We made custom parts. Um, and I enjoyed what I did. Um, but the habitat wasn't right. You know, you get there, you get to work, you see the same 15, 18 people every day, and you get the habits of them, you speak like them, the right words aren't coming out of your mouth. I mean, we've all been there. Um, and so, in this case, I felt like I was hidden under a bowl. Um, but my buddy, born again believer, Christian, said, hey, we're looking for a driver. Um, so what I do now is um, I deliver oxygen and respiratory supplies. Um, and so I get to go see people, which is great. Um, I'm kind of like my dad. I can make a conversation with anybody, find something in common, whether it be food, weather, hunting, fishing, whatever it is. Um, so I said, well, let me pray about it. And um, I talked to my wife. I prayed about it. And a uh, pastor had told me, oh, I don't remember, shortly before that, that you know, there's change coming. And so I knew that was, something was coming. And so I went to the job interview. They offered me a job on the spot, um, making more money than what I was making at the other job, better benefits, um, better vacation time within the first year. Um, so it was hard not to pass up. And so I took the job. And now, so what I get to do is I deliver these supplies, oxygen tanks, um, just different stuff like equipment, medical equipment. And so I get to go hands-on, one-on-one with people. Yeah. And so two of the guys that I work with are both spirit-filled believers, yeah. which the atmosphere is great. You know, I'm not hearing the cussing. I'm not hearing the, you know, the stories you don't want to hear. Um, I'm not falling into those things anymore. And so first week on my job, I rode with my co one of my coworkers and. He was kind of showing me, you know, training me going through and meeting some of his people. And um, first stop we went to, we prayed for a lady that fell and hurt her wrist. Um, second stop, we didn't pray, but we're able to talk to, you know. So every day I'm going through this. You know, a lot of people I see every week. I've got routes. I get to talk to them, witness to them. And sometimes you know who, I shouldn't say not to talk to, but... You know, you know they're not, they're, their heart's not ready yet. And so they're kind of stubborn. They're kind of set in their ways. They don't want to hear from you. Um, and so you know kind of how to go about it. And you know, in my job, they don't mind if we talk to people about Jesus. So, and I've got other ones that are born-again believers that I go and see, get to sit and talk to. Um, I've had the opportunity to pray with a few people. Um, I've offered to pray with other people, and they said, uh, no, thank you. 
um, I'm too far gone. I said, well, you're not too far gone. I'm going to pray for you anyways, even though it's not going to be here. That's right. Um, so I get the opportunity on a daily basis. Um, you know, I get testimonies of people with cancer healed. You know, maybe it wasn't the prayer, but... You know, it didn't hurt anything, I know that. Um, you know, and like Pastor has pneumonia. I deal with that every single day. And, and thank the Lord, um, I've only gotten sick once. And it wasn't pneumonia, but it was a pretty intense cold. But um, so he protects me everywhere I go. And I can be that light. And so I can go about... And, you know, and sometimes I get to these people's places and they say, oh, you know, a lot of, a lot of them are elderly and frail. Um, you know, this fell, can you help me pick it up? Or can you do this? You know, if it's only going to take me a second, absolutely. Amen. You know, and uh, I get to tell people, hey, you know, even if you don't want me to, I'm going to be praying for you. You know, I had one find out that they had cancer. And I said to him, I said, uh, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. I said, do you believe... He can heal you. Yeah. But I don't trust the doctors, he says. I said, well, you know, because apparently he had a clean bill of health shortly before that, and all of a sudden he has stage 4 cancer. Um, and I said to him, I said, you know, I'm going to pray for you. And he just broke, cried. You know, you know, a grown man. It's yeah. tough to see, but it was great. Great experience. Um, and he's still battling. I still see him every other week. Um, and he's fighting the good fight. So, um, God willing, he's going to make it through. Um, so along those lines, if you go with me to Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to go down to verse 3. And it says, Do nothing out of self-ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Um, so like I said, what I do in my job, everybody here can relate in a way. Um, whether you're working, whether you're just out and about in town, you see somebody that needs a hand, oh, you know, you, you got five bags, can I help you carry a couple to your car? Can, you know, somebody struggling, putting groceries in their car, anything, even at work. Um, you know, don't, don't make it about you. Don't puff up your chest. Right. Just say, hey, can I help you? Amen. You know, and if, if the Lord leads you to witness, there's your opportunity right there. There's an open door. Um, many times I always tried to, uh, well, you know, I help so-and-so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, well, that's what I did. You don't even need to bring it up after you do it. Just um, let, let what you did be an example. Yeah. Um, like the two little teachers up here, those are my girls. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to set an example and show them Amen. the right way. Yes. You know, don't brag. You know, both my girls are great at sports. And they're very competitive, especially especially the birthday girl. Um, she's overly competitive, um, but that's okay. Uh, we're working on it. Um, but you know, they get to they ha they share a bedroom, so we hear a lot from the other room. <laughs> um, you know, well, mine's better than yours. You're you know, um, trying to break that, but eventually it'll 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 work through. Um, and like I tried to tell them, it's okay to be competitive, but be competitive in the right way. Yes. Um, I was very competitive uh, all my life in sports. Um, I did rather well, I thought. Um, but you have to do it the right way. Um, I was a sophomore that got bumped up to varsity football. I was the only guy that got bumped up. Um, they wanted me to go as a freshman, but we didn't do that. Um, and so I, my head got about this big. Um, and I was very cocky, very cocky. And I would brag, you know, I would talk down to the other guys on the other team. Well, I'm on varsity, you know. And uh, so that summer between my sophomore and junior year, I went to a youth rally. And 
I did not play football one more down of football the rest of my life. Um, I enjoyed it, um, but I was using it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to use it for the wrong thing, you might as well not use this at all. Mm -hmm. um, God still gave me the talent to be athletic and do all these other things. Um, but now I know where I need to use it and how I need to use it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell another testimony. It's not my testimony. Um, it's actually a dear friend of mine. Um, his wife, three years ago, was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, basically a death sentence. And they're born again believers. They go down to a church down in Grand Rapids. Um, they met with their doctor. The doctor was born again believer. They prayed. And they beat this cancer, which is basically a death sentence. So she was in remission, didn't have any issues for a year. About a year ago, um, I was talking to my friend, and he said that his wife was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. I think it was stage four. Um, just tore apart, tore him, tore him up. Um, again, he's a born-again believer, but his faith was about this thin at that point, going through what he'd been through before. His wife had not fully recouped from the last bout of cancer, the chemo, and all the treatments to go along with it. And so I come alongside Tom when he told me about this was going on, and I pray for him and pray for his wife. And uh, I see him. He's our regional director for the National Wild Turkey Federation. So I talk to him at our meetings, and I call him on the phone once in a while and talk to him. And so he's going through. We're going through the process, and he met with the doctor again, the cancer doctor. And he says, you know, this chemo is going to kill her if the cancer doesn't. We can't do it anymore. She can't. Her body's to she hasn't recouped yet she hasn't recovered and so the doctors prayed with him and said I found um, this trial drug we're gonna go with it if it's if you want to eight weeks later she was cancer free she still yeah glory to God she still had to go through treatments and stuff just to make sure make sure everything was gone and uh, about a month ago, Tom called me at 6 o'clock in the morning um, and uh, told me the news that she was 100% cancer-free. Uh, yeah. Um, and before that, I, I, Tom had mentioned it to me, and he told me when they were going for the tests, when they were doing that. And, and uh, I just felt that I needed to fast. Amen. And so I fasted the whole day that they were having their tests. And uh, the next day, or t it was two days later, I think, after the test, they got the results. And uh, the next time I seen Tom, he come up, gave me a big hug, and started crying. You know, you know, this means everything to me. You know, of course, it's his wife. Been his wife for 25 years, um, kids and everything. So it's been a rough bout for him. But you know what? Right there is what he did. Amen. He trusted in the Lord. Amen. With everything, didn't matter what it was didn't matter what the situation was, and he still is to this day. Um, he was there on Friday, and he has pneumonia. Um, but he was there. He fought through it. We worked through it. Um, I had the opportunity to pray with him um, over the phone earlier in the day. Um, and so he made it. I haven't heard from him yet this weekend, so um, to see how he's doing. Um, but anywhere you go, you are a light. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if it's at your house, if it's at the restaurant, if it's at your work, if it's at a hospital, um, if it's at a family event. It doesn't matter what it is, you're a light. Um, you can be an example. You can be a good example. You can be a bad example. Um, you know, if people say, oh, yeah, I know you're a Christian. I know you go to church. And you're not setting the right example. That's putting a sour taste in their mouth. You know, so set that example right, right up front. Amen. Um, I know I've been guilty as charged of uh, setting bad examples. I've been there, done that. Um, not proud of it, but we all do it. So, exactly, God's grace is new every day. Um, put on your armor. 
um, and just keep going forward. Surround yourself with like-minded Christians. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing I love about my job. I work with two guys that are spirit-filled. It, it's great. You know, I, I, I don't know if any of you guys can relate, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, I don't know how to explain. Awesome. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it is. It's great because, you know, you can talk to them about stuff. You can, you can tell them what you're going through. They're going to be praying for you. They're going to be right beside you if you need it. Um, and, and likewise, same to them. So um, that's about all I got. It's, I mean, I know it's quick, but um, that's what I got. So thank you, everybody.